Hey, welcome back to the Krabby Dice. Today we're going to be looking at La Granja, which is sort of the marriage between dice drafting and multi-use cards. All right, so the theme to this game is we're going to be farmers, taking care of our farms, and then selling our goods to the stalls in the center. And the end goal, like most euros, is to get the most victory points possible. All right, so this is going to be the setup and rules video. Click on the link below for the review and playthrough. Uh, like usual, before we start, three things. Please like, subscribe, and comment on my YouTube channel. That would be fantastic. All right, let's go. Okay, let's deal with the setup. So, like usual, put out your game board in the middle of the table. Let's deal with the stuff outside. You're going to have your gigantic deck of cards. You're going to have your dice pool. You're going to be using the number of dice equal to the number of players times 2 plus 1. So if you're playing 3 players like I am now, you're going to have to take out 2 dice and return to the box. And you'll have your money on the side of the board. Okay. For the game board, first let's look at the roof tiles over here. So they're all numbered. You're going to have them all stacked up in their numbered slots here. You can put out all your number 1 roof tiles where they're supposed to go. Again, if you're playing less than four players, you'll remove some of these and return them to the box. And later on in the game, when you need to refill this, just remove the last one if you're playing less than uh, four players, for example. All right, next, uh, let's deal with the craft markers. These are the tiles that appear next to all the sectors here in beige. Just stack them up like you normally would in other games, okay? The last thing we need to take care of in the center sector over here is you're going to take one victory point shit and put it on each of the light gray spaces over there. And now we'll take care of some player pieces, okay? So you're going to give out the turn order markers to all the players. Now, whoever is in first is going to get to place a marker on the two space. Second place is going to put on the three. Third on the four. And whoever's fourth in turn order is going to place it on the five. You're going to sort of do the exact same thing for the siesta track. So first player, second player, third player, and fourth player. And just put it there. Okay. Now, if you are playing less than four players, you need to block off the sectors here with an X. Okay. What I like to do is use the player color that's not in use. And just cover them up. And the absolute last thing we need to do is set up our building order tiles. Okay, so for this step here, you're going to take a die. You're going to roll it three times. And you're going to put the number one order tile on that number spot. So it's going to be one, two. You can also tell by the two a number here. And you'll also add a victory point shit to it. And you're going to do that two more times. If you do roll the exact same number, just keep rolling until you get a unique number. Uh, next, you're going to put the number two on number six. This is the number six spot. We'll put a victory point shit and now we get number three which we'll put number three and put a victory point shit now let's go to the player board area for player board area pretty simple each player is going to get a board okay you're going to toss them four cards from the top of the deck they're going to put one of their markers on the commodity spot right over here you're going to start with one dollar the rest of their markers are going to be in a little pool here uh, this is the player turn order token and lastly, they're going to get their donkey tokens. So they're all unique. Make sure that everyone has a three, a four, a one, and a two donkey uh, tile. They're going to be placed right here in the corner. And we're pretty much ready to start. Let's go to rules. Sorry, I did forget one thing. Uh, the game does come with victory point chits, but I find that using a uh, victory point uh, track is somewhat easier so what i did is i printed this out from bgg and i took one of every player's markers and put them on the one space if you are playing with the victory point chits uh give everyone one victory point to start the game and then you're ready to go all right so the rules overview section for la granja so like i said in the intro this game is really a marriage between dice drafting and multi-use cards so every round we're going to be drafting dice getting the benefits from those dice we're also going to be playing cards and depending on where you play it on your tableau you're going to be getting orders special abilities fields or farm extensions all right now the game's going to last exactly six rounds every single time no matter the player count and we're going to sort of note that with the uh, roof tiles over here so when the last set of roof tiles get put on the board that'll signify the last round of the game all right, after six rounds, you complete the round. Whoever has the most points is going to win the game. All right, like most euros. Okay, now every single round, pretty simple. You have this very, very useful player tile. Uh, you're going to follow the same four steps every single time. All right, so step one is to play your multi-use card and to produce. Second step is the uh, dice drafting step. Uh, step three is to do some uh, deliveries. Uh, so you're going to be delivering stuff to the game board and to your own uh, orders. And then finally is a reset slash scoring uh, phase. 
All right, so I'm going to go into detail on all those phases, show you how it works, how the mechanisms work. I'm also going to show you a bit on the multi-use cards. And finally, I'll come back for the scoring at the end of the video. And then you should get the gist of how the game works. All right, so let's get started. All right, the first phase every single round, it's on your player aid tile here. It's step number one in blue. So this is a four step process. Uh, steps one, two, and three can be done by all players at the exact same time. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we're gonna have to come back for step four when the turn order matters when talking about the roof tiles. Okay, so let's talk about these steps in order. So the first step is playing a card. So you get to play one card from your hand anywhere on your tableau. Okay, so we already talked about it a little bit in the intro here, but the top section up here is an order that you can fulfill. You're gonna slide it down there. The bottom section here is a special ability that you'll have for the rest of the game, so you'll slide it at the bottom. The left-hand side is a field that will produce uh, goods, so you'll slide it here. And then on the right-hand side here, these are farm extensions that you'll add to the right-hand side of your board over here, all right? Now, for the first three that I mentioned, that's always free. You just slide the card uh, when it's time to slide the card. For the farm extensions on the right, well, you have to pay. Okay, so if it's your first farm board extension, um, you're gonna have to pay one resource. If it's your second farm extension, two unique resources. If it's your third one, three unique resources, and so on and so on and so on. All right, by unique, I mean uh, two that are not the same. So you can give up a olive, and a dollar, for example, not two dollars. Okay, so let's just say, for example, I want to make this one a field. Okay. Now, the second thing you're going to do is you're going to refill up to your hand limit. Okay, so it's written over here on your tableau. Uh, so your default hand limit is three. With farm extensions, you can get some bonuses. So in total here, I have five. Uh, so you're going to draw up to five cards. So if you're carrying four cards, uh, you'll draw only one card. If you had three cards, you'll draw two cards. Okay. After that, that's the number one step. After that, you're going to do receive income here. For that, you're just going to look at the whole blue section in your tableau. So if you have any of these blue tiles on the right, you'll get the bonuses associated. You'll also get the bonus of the blue sections on the farm extensions over here. So in this example, I would just get $2 from the general supply. And next, we're going to do some production. So your fields are going to produce. And if you have more than one pig, it'll also produce. Okay, so all your fields are going to produce. So these are multi-use tokens. Uh, they're just markers. So wherever they are on the board, it represents that good. So for example, this token here represents grapes. This one represents olives. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is all your fields are going to produce. So you just put tokens wherever you have a field. And the second thing you're going to do is if you have more than one pig in your dens here, they'll also produce a piglet, I guess we can call it. So you just take another marker and add it to your den area here. Now, very important, if you don't have space for the piglet, let's say I'm starting the round right now and I'm producing a piglet. Well, you can't produce it. You can't even sell it. You just skip it. All right. So very important. You must have space for the pigs. All right. And that was step three. And finally, we get to the roof section over here. So for that, you're going to look at the roof tiles over here. And in turn order, you're each going to draft and pay for a roof tile. Okay. Um, the cost is indicated on the top here. And when you take a tile, it's going to go always to the far left available slot on your roof board up here. So the first one you're going to get is going to go here. The second one's here, third, fourth, and fifth. All right. If you cover up any of these tokens, you're going to get that many victory points from the general supply. And whenever you get a token, you actually place it uh, top side up. And when you use the tile, you're going to flip it over. All right. So you get to use it whenever you like. Uh, now, the only exception to this rule is during the first round of the game, you actually draft in reverse turn order. Okay. So normally, let's say it's round four or five, you're going to go green, uh, red, yellow. But during the first round of the game, you're actually going to go yellow, red, green. That's the only exception to the rule. Uh, a little bit of an annoying annoyance, but that's how it is. Okay. And remember, if you are playing with less than four players, just make sure to have the available roof tiles on the display over here. Uh, for example, in a three player game, you'll have three in a two player game. You'll have two and just make sure to return the ones you're not using back to the box. And that's pretty much it for the first phase of the game. 
All right, the second phase every single round is the revenue phase, or I like to call it the dice drafting phase. So the first player you can grab all the dice that's available for that game, give it a good roll, and assign those dice to the left-hand side of your board over here. So something like that. Okay, now in turn order, you're going to take turns drafting a die. After you draft a die, you're going to get the benefit for the slot that you drafted it for. And you're going to place it on your player board just as an indicator that you took that action already. All right, so you're going to gra draft a die and put on the left-hand side over here. Then let's say second and third player is going to draft these dice. It'll loop back to first player. Let's say I drafted this die over here. Again, placing it on your board. And now let's say second and third player drafted their dice. And there will always be one die left over after everyone's drafted. Uh, this is a common die that everyone will get the benefit for. So you can pretty much all do this at the exact same time. Now, for number six, the turn order might matter. So you might want to go in turn order. But for all the other ones, just get it all at the same time. Now, let's talk about all these benefits and what you get. So number one is obvious. You get a pig. So you're going to take one of your tokens and put it in your den. Now, if your den is already full, you need to sell the pig right away. So it's not actually going to be placed anywhere on your board. You'll just make up $3 from the general supply. Now, if you take a number two, you're going to either take a card from the top of the deck or you're going to take any harvest good. A harvest good is going to be placed in your den. So if you take a olive, you're going to place a token inside the den space here. A wheat is going to go into this space here and a grape is going to go into this space over here. Alright, same thing goes for number three. You'll take two unique harvest goods, so two that are not the same. Again, placing them in your den spots. If you take a number four, you'll just get four coins from the general supply. If you take a number five, alright, this deals with the siesta track and upgrades. Let's talk about the siesta track first. You'll get two jumps on the siesta track, or one jump on the siesta track and one upgrade, or two upgrades. What's an upgrade? Well, that's just moving your goods from their sort of harvested slash fields into their either food or wine or um, pig meat over here. So an upgrade is just sliding a token into their finished product, okay? Um, if you do the double star, this means move two goods. So you can either move two tokens from the same side or move any token you want on this side to their finished product here. Uh, these uh, products cannot be sold, but they're very useful in finishing off contracts up here. All right, and lastly is number six. So if you took a number six, you get to do one delivery or you get two coins. All right, when everyone's done that, so you did draft the two dice, got those two actions, and then everyone's going to get the common die. You're all going to get that action, and then you're done phase two. All right, so the third phase every single round is the transportation phase, and that's the gray section down here on your player aid. So as you can see here, this is sort of a four-step process. Let's start with the first one. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go through your donkey tiles that are available, and you're going to pick one of them secretly. Okay, now these are uh, one-time use, so once you use them, you're going to place them on the side. But if it's the fourth round, you actually get to re-pick up all your donkey tiles and pick again. So in round one, they're all available. Then the one that you used in round one won't be available in round two. And in round three, the one that you used in round one and two won't be available. All right. These donkey tiles will give you two pieces of information. Uh, how many bumps on the siesta track that you'll get. And then how many deliveries you'll get to do in the next couple of seconds. I'll explain you how that's done. All right. Uh, if you do have hats, uh, once everyone reveals, all right, in turn order, you're going to move up the siesta track as many times as there's hats on this token. So I'll show you with an example. Let's say red had two and then green also had two and then yellow only had one. You'll do it like that. Okay. Again, after you use the donkey tile, just put it on the side. It won't be available again till round four. Okay. After moving up the siesta track, the next thing you're going to do is reissue the turn order track because these are affected right away okay so green will get number one red will get number two and yellow will get number three all right so organize that amongst all the players all right and after that in turn order we're going to do our deliveries so for this again you got to look at the donkey tile that you use and perform delivery so in this case here i'll do one delivery okay so all the players will do a delivery 
or how many deliveries they had on their tile. And then after that, everyone has the opportunity to pay coins for deliveries. Okay. The amount of times you can perform this action is displayed on your board over here. All right. So for right now, I can only do that one time. But if I had farm extensions here with multiple icons like this, I can do it more often. So if these two cards had it, I would be able to pay three coins for three more deliveries, for example. All right. And pretty much when you're all done that, you finished phase three. All right, so let's take a little break of the video here to talk about delivery. So every time you see a donkey symbol or gain a donkey symbol, you're gaining a delivery. A delivery means moving a good from your player board area to either an order you want to fulfill or a craft house on the board. Okay, uh, for every donkey symbol, it means moving one good. All right, so for example, if I wanted to send goods over here into this craft building here, and I had three donkey symbols, I can take three different goods or whatever I like from either my fields or my uh, dens here and then place them in the um, appropriate spots on the craft uh, building board here. Now, if you ever fill up a whole row of the crafting building, you're going to gain the benefit tile next to it. So you can get the blue ones that are placed on the right hand side of your board over here. Okay, and these are going to help you during the revenue phase. You're going to get extra stuff. Or you can get some of the other ones which are gray or green. Those are going to be placed up here. And those are going to help you during the drafting phase and also the delivery phase of the game. Okay, another benefit you get for clearing up a whole row is first you get to take your tokens back. All right, the second thing is you get to place your token on the gray section associated to that craft building. Uh, this is sort of an indication that you can't fill up this craft building again. And if there was a victory point shit there, well, you get to keep the victory point shit. So the first person to finish any of the craft buildings will get an extra point. Okay, there's a very special rule when you're finishing craft buildings. For the first three people to finish a craft building, all right, you're going to basically open up three other craft buildings. Okay, so there are three that are locked at the start of the game that you can't send deliveries to. Okay, but as soon as somebody finishes the first one, what you're going to do is you're going to find the number one blocked spot. So in this example, it would be this one and you're going to remove it from the game. So it'll open up that area and whoever unlocked it is actually going to get an extra victory point. Okay. Now the second person to finish a craft building is going to unlock number two. We're going to chuck this back in the game box and they'll score an extra victory point. And the third person to finish any craft building, we're going to remove number three and they're going to score an extra point. All right, that's how that works. And you can also sort of unlock it and deliver to that building in the same turn. So for example, if you're only missing one good here and you're delivering for three, you could send the grape, finish it off, open up a new one, and then send it off to another one, for example. All right? So that's how the craft buildings work. Now, let's talk about sending it to our order cards up here. Sort of the same exact concept. You're going to be taking goods from your player board area and just put them up here. So in this example here, I can take a pig for one delivery here. I'll take a uh, an olive here. And let's just say this was a wheat because I don't have it available. And I'll place it here. Now again, you don't have to place these all in one go. You can do it over multiple rounds, but in this case I did it in one round. And then what happens when you finish the card, you're going to gain three benefits. All right, the first benefit you're pretty much always going to get is a commodity good. For these, you're going to take a token and you're going to put it in the commodity spot right over here. Second, you're going to score victory points equal to the number indicated below over here. So you're going to gain that from the general supply or from the point track over here. And second is you get to take one of your markers and place it on a number four stall anywhere in the middle. All right. Or the indicated number. So in this example, it is a number four. Okay. So find a free spot and place it in there. When you play a stall, you get to kick out any opponent markers around you that are of lower value. So because I played a four here, there's a three. I'm going to kick out the greens piece back to his general supply and you score a victory point for each piece you've kicked out. So if there were multiple pieces here, 
and you kick out two for example you'll score two victory points now if there are none of that number available on the game board you're actually going to kick out any opponent's piece that you like for example if none of the fours are available i can actually kick out the yellow uh, number four over here and i'll score an extra victory point for that piece that i kicked out as well and that's pretty much all the types of deliveries that you can do small rules clarification when you finish a craft building you're also going to score victory points equal to the current round number you can just look at the roof tiles over here and uh, when you get a craft building bonus tile you cannot activate it the same round that you picked it up all right so at the end of the round uh, next phase we're going to be flipping these over to activate them all right so those are all the rules there's just one aspect that i have left to explain in the game and that's the anytime actions all right now that you know pretty much all the rules uh there are some things you can do during the game during your turn that you can do as many times as you want and they're sort of like free slash anytime actions okay so the first of those types i'm going to talk about is the commodities all right you can use up a commodity token and put it back into your general supply for either four gold or two different harvest goods remember the tokens go in your dens or a card off the top of the deck or a pig remember to have the space available or two free upgrades a free upgrade is taking a token from its den moving it into its finished product uh, for the goods on the left here you can take it from the den and move it over or from the fields and move them into their finished product there okay another free action is to actually use your roof tiles all right so when you buy them they're not used right you'll place them here at any point you can actually flip it over and use the benefit that's indicated at the bottom over here okay next anytime action you can do is buying or selling a type of good all right so uh, for example if i had extra pigs i can uh, i can sell them or if i needed a pig i can buy them at the cost indicated on the left and the last time type of anytime action is performing an upgrade all right so again for an upgrade you're gonna have to pay the cost that's indicated in between the arrows here you're going to take a good from the uh, indicated den or field and move it into its finished product in the middle over here. Um, just as a general note, you can never sell or buy the finished goods over here. So either the meat over here, the food or the wine. And as a general note, you can also never move goods from your fields here into the dens on the right over here. That's why when you're delivering, most of the time you'd want to always use your tokens from your fields first because they'll get replenished during the next round and those are all the free actions all right phase four is the scoring phase all right you're going to do basically three things the first is you're going to score a point for each of your tokens in the market all right don't count the craft good spaces so for example here all the players will get one extra point Next, you're gonna score extra points for how far you got up the siesta track. So in this example here, uh, green and red will each score an extra point. Next, you're gonna reset the siesta track. So remember to keep the current order. So you're gonna put green on top of red, on top of yellow, and then reset it back to zero. All right. And finally, you're gonna reset the roof tiles here. So for all the roof tiles that were not taken that round, you'll just toss these back into the box. You'll take the next round uh, roof markers and add them back to the track over here now if you are playing less than four players remember to remove some roof tiles equal to the number of players uh, this is for three and this will be for two players all right and after this you go to the next round after, for the sixth round you actually don't have to reset this stuff and you'll just go to end game scoring and finally we get to end game scoring so this is probably the easiest thing to calculate in the game all you're gonna do is you're going to convert your harvested goods and your pigs into money so for any pigs you have left over you're going to sell them for three and for your harvested goods which means only your stuff in your dens you cannot sell your uh, upgraded uh, uh, goods or anything in your fields but you can convert whatever's in your den you'll make some cash and then you'll convert your money into victory points at a five to one rate so for every five coins you get one victory point you'll add that to your score total and whoever has the most points is gonna win the game so those are all the rules to la grana let me know if i made any mistakes down below uh click the link below for my review and the playthrough 
Uh, like usual, subscribe to my channel. That'll be fantastic. We'll see you in the next one. Later.